ready for God's word. Amen. Yes. Amen. Lord, Father God, we're all just we're ready to hear from you. Father God, we're we're standing, we're sitting before you, just eagerly anticipating your word, Lord God. That word that brings life, the truth. Lord God, so I pray that we hear those, your words this morning, Lord God, for exactly what they are. They are your words. Father God, change us this morning to be a little bit more like you than when we first walked into this place. Lord God, for your glory to be revealed in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we're in week three of this series um, this Christmas series we've been going through and we go through the names of Jesus and we are at the third week he's the everlasting father we've been going through um, I have quite a few scriptures here today so <laughs> uh, if you got your Bibles you'll be flipping fast if not that's okay we'll have it all up on the screen but we've been on Isaiah chapter 9 and in chapter 9 verse 6 it says for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You know, we can take great comfort, great comfort and encouragement in the fact that, you know, we have a wonderful Heavenly Father who will be with us now and forever. Bible has a wonderful phrase, from everlasting to everlasting. For just a moment, think about that. From everlasting to everlasting. That what which this child brings will be from everlasting on one hand to everlasting on the other hand. It's 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 too much for our minds to really wrap around to, to fathom to to comfortably go to. We can't. Everlasting to everlasting. This child that's going to be born in Bethlehem will be recognized as eternal. He has no beginning. He has no end. He existed before he came to earth and he will exist forever. You know, when this happened, people were living in shaky times and they wanted something. They needed something to cling to. Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you're living in shaky times. You feel like, man, that next step might just break you. You might, you might just fall right through. <laughs> People living in shaky times want something that they can depend on. Right? A father figure, if you will. He said first that the one who's coming is everlasting. In other words, he's eternal. He's always existed and he always will. You know, I find in the scripture that Christ has always existed, forever. Look with me at John chapter 1. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and then verse 14, it says, In the beginning was the Word, which is Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. We skip down to verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You know, there's two things that this world is desperately <laughs> searching for today. One of them is time, right? We never have enough time to do the things that we need to do. The other one is stability or permanency. Something that is always going to be there, stable and sturdy. You know, Jesus being born, he would bring a whole new dynamic. A whole new dynamic of relationship into this world. And in this relationship, this relationship is going to be an eternal one. 
It's going to be an everlasting relationship. We've all had relationships before, right? We've all experienced different kinds of relationships throughout our lives, right? My best friend that I had in kindergarten, I don't even know where he lives, right? <coughs> These relationships change. I've met so many people in so many different places. Being in the Army, man, good friends. I haven't heard from them in years. I don't even know how to get a hold of them. people that I've had in my life my whole life. <laughs> but this relationship has changed. It's matured. That happened. <laughs> but church, you know when Jesus comes into your life to be your friend, you have a friend forever. He, he does not change. Sometimes we lose friendship because we change and they didn't, or they change and we didn't, whatever. He never changes. It doesn't grow stale in his relationship with you. Time does not affect how close he is to you. Well, I've been dealing with this one for how long now? No, <laughs> he's always going to be that close to you. He doesn't come, become uninterested in you or what's happening in your life. Well, this is, I don't want to bring this to God because this is just a little thing. I don't want to bother him. No, he doesn't become uninterested even in the little things or the things that you, well, I've come to him with with this ten times now. Is he still going to listen to me? Yes! <laughs> he is. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's stability. <laughs> There's a wonderful permanency in our relationship with Jesus. So we're going to look at three qualities of what an eternal father means for us. What an everlasting father means for us. First of all, Christ's character, it does not change. Chris Tomlin, we just, we just sang one of his songs, that last song. I, I like to think of him as America's worship leader. I, I just, when he starts singing and the spirit starts moving, it's awesome. But he came up, uh, wrote this song called Forever years back and really, really hits the nail right on the head, calling God our eternal father and for his goodness, his faithfulness, his love, his mercy. Some of the words go like this. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever. For he is good, he is above all things. His love endures forever. From the rising to the setting sun, his love endures forever. By the grace of God, we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is strong. Forever God is with us. Forever. That's stability. <laughs> He hit it right on the head there. He got it right with that one. In fact, <clears throat> Jesus being part of the Trinity, Jesus being God, means that the character of Jesus does not change. His mercy doesn't change. His love, His grace, His forgiveness does not change. From the dawning of the day to the setting of the sun, his character does not change. Who he is is who he is. He's not striving to become better. He is better. <laughs> he always has been and he always will be. From the beginning of time all the way into eternity, in Jesus, his character never alters. Look at what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13. Verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, today forever. So Christ's character, it doesn't change. He's the same. Remember when you first got to know him? Man, he's that same person. He's that same person today. Till eternity, he's the same person. Christ's character never changes. Also, his compassion does not change. Will not change. You know, throughout the Gospels, we can find Jesus was full of compassion. Look at Matthew chapter 9, in verse 36, it says, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them. Why? Because they were weary. They were scattered, <laughs> like sheep without a shepherd. They weren't being taken care of. He had compassion upon them. What about that leper? Remember the leper in Mark chapter 1? Verses 40 through 41, it says, Now a leper came to him, imploring him, 
kneeling down to him and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. And then Jesus, moved with compassion, stretched out his hands and touched him and said to him, I am willing. <laughs> Be cleansed. The prodigal son, in Luke 15, verse 20. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, threw his arms around his neck, and kissed him. You know, I went and looked up that word, compassion. It means suffering with another. Painful sympathy. A sensation of sorrow elevated by the distress or misfortunes of another. So compassion is a mixture of passion intensified by love and sorrow. Imagine being so passionate about sorrow. <laughs> Man, this is who he is. And guess what? He's never going to change. Ever. So when Jesus, he sees us in our distress, right, he has compassion on us. When he sees the mess that we've made out of our lives, he's moved with compassion. Because we're weary, like, like sheep without a shepherd. He is moved with compassion for us. When life's been hard, when we've been dealt a bad hand, when disaster after disaster follows us, follows us around like, like a puppy, whole world just seems to be falling in around us. Jesus is moved with compassion for us. That compassion of Jesus, it moved him to rescue us. The compassion of Jesus moves him to save us. The compassion of Jesus does not change. Not only does Christ's character and his compassion not change, but also Christ's commitment does not change. The stability that we are so longing for. Hanging on to something that we know, we know will save us. Hanging on to something that we know will last forever. His commitment. Let's go back into the Old Testament Lamentations chapter 3. Verses 22 through 26 says, Because of the Lord's faithful love, we do not perish, for his mercies never end. Verse 23, they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Verse 24, I say, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will put my hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. Verse 26, it is good to wait quietly for deliverance from the Lord. He's committed to us. There's another piece of scripture that's pretty famous, and I've, I've leaned on this one a lot throughout the years. And I took this from the, the message version, just because I like how it's written out. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know what I'm doing. This is what God is saying to us. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you hope for. Jesus is our eternal Father, and He will always be there for you. He will not abandon you. His character doesn't change. His compassion doesn't change. His commitment to you does not change. We talked about uh, different relationships. I've grown up with people I, I don't know anymore that I once knew, but He has a permanent relationship. It is permanent, everlasting, eternal, forever, without end. Psalm 90, verse 2 says, Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. This is his word. This is who he is. He's everlasting. His love towards us is everlasting. never going to stop loving us. You don't have to worry about that. There's not that fear. You ever hear that one? That this one person is going to stop loving you? You don't have to worry about that with him. He will never stop loving you. And he can never love us more or less than he does right now. 
There's nothing that you can do to improve his love for you. He loves you. Isaiah chapter 54 says in verse 8, But with everlasting love, this is God, with everlasting love I have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. With everlasting love. That goes beyond what we can fathom. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 3 says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. This is God's word to us. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Be rest assured. Feel safe in my arms is what he's saying. His covenant with us is everlasting. Church of God has entered into a covenant relationship with us. Think about a marriage covenant. Till death do us part. Right? That's in there. There's no such clause in the covenant with God. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 37. In Ezekiel 37, verses 26 and 27, it says, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It will be an everlasting covenant. I will establish them and increase their numbers. I will put my sanctuary among them forever. Church. 27 says, my dwelling place will be, will be with them. I will be their God, and they will be my people. This is God's word. And this is what he's revealing to us. It will be an everlasting covenant. I will put my sanctuary among them forever. Jesus is our Father. Again, Isaiah 9, 6. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He's eternal. Right? He's always existed. He always will exist. He's everlasting. Everlasting. Okay, that's the first part of the phrase. But what about the second part of the phrase? Everlasting Father. His son was born a child, yes. Look what happened when Jesus grew up. He cared for people, just like a father. He nurtured the sick back to health, just like a father. He prayed for people, just like a father. He was there for people. He was strong and dependable, like a father. See, fathers, if there's be anything in the lives of their children, well, they have to do certain things that hold certain places in the lives of their children, right? For instance, fathers are to believe in their children. If you study the life of Jesus, you find someone who believed in people. Fathers are to be firm, but loving, which is how Jesus handled people. Fathers are to provide a place out of which their children can, can gain their identity. So they can say, you know, I'm a, I'm a smith and I come from a long line of smiths. We know who we are. Jesus did that for 2,000 years. His followers have been saying, I'm a Christian. <laughs> and I'm historically linked to generations of Christmas Christians all the way back to Christ. Fathers ought to be thinking about and planning for their children's future. John chapter 14, Jesus says in verse 1, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He's taking care of us. He was thinking about his kids' future. I'll tell you a story that illustrates the fatherliness of Jesus. One time as Jesus is traveling up to Jerusalem, he gets word that the king of Jerusalem, a man named Herod, wants to kill him. But Jesus doesn't shiver and he resists. He doesn't run the other way, head back out into the countryside. He just keeps a steady pace as he's hiking through this valley. A few hours later, he gets to the top of that last hill. He looks over the city, <laughs> laid out in front of him. It's almost like a whisper, he says to himself in Luke chapter 13 and verse 34. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets, and stone those sent to you. How often I have longed 
to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. Can't you just hear the longing of a parent in that? Oh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, you, you have no idea how much I care for you. How often I have wanted to scoop you up in my arms and, and just wrap them around you. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. See, in this piece of scripture, we're told that whoever we are, the Messiah will be called Everlasting Father to us. Right? He will be there forever. He's not going to follow the, the old pattern of brokenness that so many of our fathers passed on to us. As Everlasting Father, He will do what fathers are called to do. He will provide for us. He will watch over us. And yes, He will discipline us. See, as our Everlasting Father, Jesus gives us he gives us acceptance and approval. He calls us to himself. Even when we were sinners, <laughs> come to me. With the woman at the well. He knew all about her, but he befriended her anyway. The woman caught in adultery. Remember they dragged her out in the courtyard, they were getting ready to stone her to death. And then they're asking Jesus, oh, well, we're at, let's catch Jesus in a little, see if we can flip him up. What are we supposed to do with this woman? What does the law say we should do with this? And what's his response? Well, whoever here has got no sin, well, you can throw the first stone. There's only one person there without sin. And that's Jesus. So they don't throw that stone. And then he says to her, where are your accusers? Why are they not condemning you? And he says, well, neither do I condemn you. Now go and sin no more. What does Jesus say about himself? John chapter 3, verse 17. He said, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. See, he's not waiting for you to perform. No. <laughs> he doesn't withheld, withhold his love from you for some sort of trial period to see if you're worthy of his love. No, that's not how it works. He loves you. And he lavishes this love upon you. But here's the thing. You're not special. <laughs> no, he loves every single one of us. He lavishes his love upon everyone. <coughs> now your father may or may not have had ever given you such um, affirmation, but you can find that in Jesus Christ. And Jesus is our everlasting father. Our everlasting Father, He gives us life. You know, in a human sense, we were created by our parents, right? Mom and Dad. But in a larger sense, we were created by our Heavenly Father. If you go all the way back into Genesis. In chapter 2, verse 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils. And the man became a living being. We just sang that song, It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. John chapter 1 verse 3 says, All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. So Jesus, he not only gave us physical life, we were made by him. But more importantly, he gave us spiritual life. John chapter 5 verse 24 says, I tell you the truth. Jesus says this, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm always going to tell you the truth. Whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. Our Heavenly Father, our everlasting Father, gives us life. He also gives us advice. In Luke chapter 21, verse 15, it says, For I will give you such words and a wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. Ephesians chapter 1, I told you I was going to spit a lot of them out here. Verse 17 says, I keep asking, this is Paul, he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So, why? So that you may know him better. Our 
everlasting Father loves us. John 15, verse 9. Jesus says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. I remember when my kids were little. I used to love when they would I'd come home, yeah, I told they'd come running and get into my arms and I'd snuggle. They, they knew they were loved. I loved that. <laughs> That's the way I look at Jesus as Father. I know He loves me. <laughs> he loves me more than any earthly father could love. I know He's always going to put His nail-scarred hands around me to remind me <laughs> how much He does love me. All right, our everlasting Father, He protects us. And we saw this last week when we talked about our mighty, mighty God. Here's Jesus praying in John 17, verses 11 and 12. He says, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Verse 12, while I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name that you gave me. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, it says in verse 3, The Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. Jesus never lets his guard down. He never lets us down. He's always there for us to run to, to keep, keep us safe, to protect us from evil. He's never going to allow you to slip out of his hand. Look at John chapter 10, verses 27 and 28. Jesus is speaking to us and he says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. Jesus is our everlasting Father. He has a permanent and paternal relationship with us. And you put those things together, we come to that third point. Look at Psalm 103, verse 17. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear Him, and His righteousness to their children's children. He is with us forever. And as our everlasting Father, Jesus, He disciplines us. He doesn't just simply accept and approve you and say He's proud of you. He wants you to grow up. <laughs> he does. He wants you to mature into the person that, that fulfills all the great dreams and hopes that he has for you. <laughs> and because of this, sometimes we're in need of discipline. We are. Because he wants you to keep there. He wants you to keep going on that road that he's got for you. Proverbs chapter 3 says in verses 11 and 12, My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplines those he loves. As a father, the son he delights in. Mr. So, well, you know, God's punishment, anger, his wrath were completely exhausted in the death, the suffering of Christ on the cross. So now, those of us who are in Christ, there will be no judgment or condemnation. God's attitude toward us will never be anything but complete love and goodness. I want you to listen to these promises he has for us. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. And once made perfect, Jesus became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Hebrews 7, 25 says, Therefore he, will be, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Man. He's always working for us. He's always, <laughs> always loving us. John 10, 28 says, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. God came to earth to develop, to establish a permanent relationship with us. That relationship could only be established once we were delivered from our sin. Isaiah 45, verse 17. But Israel will be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You will never be put to shame or disgrace to ages everlasting. 
Isaiah 60, verse 20. Your sun will not, never set again, and your moon wane, will wane no more. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your days of sorrow will end. John chapter 6, verse 47, he says, I tell you the truth, he who believes in me has everlasting life. He wants us with him. He wants us in this permanent relationship with him. We come to him seeking that. He has it for us. If you ventured into that here, you, you completely trust in Jesus with your with your life. You can be ensured of that covenant forever. It's never going to end. Our Messiah. Our everlasting Father. He has a permanent relationship with us. His love. His covenant. It's everlasting. I'm going to leave with that. We're going to worship in a minute here, but I want just one more piece of scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 33 says in verse 27, The eternal God is your refuge. <laughs> the eternal God is your refuge. That's why he's here. That's why you're here. The eternal God is your refuge. And underneath are the everlasting arms. He will never abandon you. He'll never let you go. Amen? Amen. Amen.